In our previous session, we have seen how to configure add DB context as part of startup.cs class inside our configure services method. So now the next step is identify the configuration which is required for creating the connection string. So to do that, first let's understand inside this properties folder, we have launch settings.json. If you observe over here, you'll be able to find that environment variables we have pointed ASP not ASP Netcore environment as development. So since we are making use of development environment, so the connection string which we have to set where EF has to read the necessary changes has to be done inside app settings.development.json. So inside this file, we have to make necessary changes so that EF will be responsible to read this configuration file from here since we are pointed to development environment. So let's make the necessary changes over here. Here you can provide connection strings and we have to name the connection string. Let's name it as default connection. And here the value for this we have to provide data source and data source name will be name of the DB. That is my app dot d. So these are the necessary changes required inside app settings dot development dot json, which we have to do. So once we have done these changes, the next step is to install dot net tool that is dot net hyphen ef with the required version, so that all the list of commands will be available for usage in order to migrate the data for our database. So let's do that next. Let's switch to Google Chrome browser and let's search for you get space dot net hyphen e. Let's enter. You will be able to find this link over here. Click on this. And here you can see the command for installation that is dot net tool install hyphen hyphen global dot net hyphen ef version 7.0.0. Suppose you are making use of dot net core 6. Point or other versions, then you can click on versions over here and select the required version. If you are selecting another version, for example, 6.0.11, in this case, you can see that the command got changed over here, which is pointed to 6.0.11. So instead of that, if you are using 7 version, you can click on this. And this particular command, you, just, you can copy by clicking on this. This will be copied. Once you have copied this, switch to Visual Studio Code. Go to Terminal. So inside Terminal, before installing it, just check if it's already installed by making use of .NET Tool List space hyphen G. Press Enter. Here you can see that in my machine already 6.0.5. This version is already available over here. You can confirm whether it's installed or not by making use of .NET space EF and press enter. And here you can see that it has been already installed in my machine. And to confirm this, just scroll up. You can see EF already is installed with unicorn symbol. And here you can see entity framework core.net command line tools 6.0.5 has been successfully installed in this machine. Since it's first time in your case, you have to run this command which we copied from Google Chrome, this command, and press enter. Then you'll be able to install 7.0.0 in, in your machine. So once we have installed .NET EF into our machine, into our framework, Next step is to make use of migrations because by installing this, if you observe in Google Chrome browser, here you can see if you go to README, here you'll be able to see that what all commands we can use as part of .NET EF. That is .NET EF migrations, add, list, script, all these commands will be available for our framework, for our project inside Digital Studio Code. So that's the reason we have installed this by making use of this command.
so that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching this video please like comment and share this video and kindly subscribe to my channel in order to watch more videos click on that bell icon so that you will start receiving notifications whenever i am uploading a new video